Hello, my name is Derek McLeod and I'm an electrical assessor at Hartford Regional College. And this is yet another one of my uh, presentations on my YouTube channel designed to support electrical apprentices on their level three journey. And this is for the sitting guilds 5357. This particular presentation is for Unit 109, which is about applying design and installation practices and procedures. Um, the reason behind this update, if you've been looking at some of my previous videos, um, is because City and Guilds have updated the qualification handbook. And I've included the cover page uh, from the handbook on this slide. It, it's a freely available download um, available from the City and Guilds website. You will also see the workplace logbook, which focuses on the workplace evidence that you're required to complete your portfolio. And those are the six units. As I say, this, un uh, this presentation is for unit 109. And it's designed to give you, it says here, write up help um, when you're producing your own evidence, for example, write up reflective account, um, other types of evidence that can be produced in this unit can happen through direct observation by your assessor, through a professional discussion, a witness testimony, uh, questions. So different types of evidence can be produced for this unit. In the next few slides, we'll look at some of the criteria that you need to evidence um, and some of the changes that sitting guilds have made as part of the change to the qualification pathway. Okay, and in this slide, um, we're looking at extracts from the workplace logbook. The workplace logbook is available from sitting guilds website. But you might also want to speak with your assessor, your training provider, your college, because that's password protected. And I would encourage you to print off and have not just the qualification handbook, but also the workplace logbook as useful reference books um, to ensure that you're capturing all of the evidence for your MVQ. OK, things to note here, we've, we can see I've highlighted a few bits. What I've actually highlighted is we've got uh, additional requirements from sitting guilds on this new 5357 pathway. Now what they're saying is they expect more than 50% of the evidence produced in this unit, and you can see there's other units, to be from a industrial or commercial setting. That's non-domestic. And in the workplace logbook, they give a very prescriptive description of what they consider to be domestic premises. I haven't captured all of it here. It's not intended to be um, a lift and paste of all of the workplace logbook. I really would encourage you to read it and be aware of the content of it. We've also got, again, a reminder that for this unit, as in all of the units, you're going to have to produce evidence on at least a minimum of two occasions. It might be more. It does depend on the nature of your work and how, you know, how frequent you're going to submit evidence through. So it can be more than two, but it must be at least a minimum of two occasions. And again, uh, another thing to note is behaviours. Behaviours you'll be expected to evidence, but as I've said in some of the other presentations, they're almost naturally occurring. So as you're evidencing the criteria, it's almost uh, naturally occurring that you'll be meeting the behaviours. And I've put on one of the other slides in this presentation a reminder of what the behaviours are. But for this unit, you're expected to demonstrate behaviours in all of the eight behaviour groups. We've also got a reminder of the minimum supplementary evidence requirements, which involves installing 
three different wiring systems, five different cable, uh, five different cable types, and five different types of electrical component. Remember, this is the installation of. Um, so, for example, on the cables, it's probably going to be in the first fixed stage, isn't it? Where you're installing the cables. And we'll come on to talk about that in a little bit more detail in the next slide. OK, so in this slide, we're now starting to look at some of the criteria. Um, in some of the other presentations, I haven't pasted all of the criteria. It's not meant to be an exhaustive list. I will say for all of you, read the criteria and ensure that you're meeting the criteria in how you present your evidence and how you ensure that your assessor observes you. This is the criteria that we need to capture. Um, I'll, I'm not going to go through each and every one. I suggest you read and you familiarise yourself with the criteria. As you submit, for example, your own evidence, it's always a good idea to list in the margin, in the columns, where you believe you've met the criteria. So as you're taking photographs, as you're writing about what you've done at work, list the criteria. It shows the assessor that this is what you believe you've done and it allows better feedback. In other words, the assessor is likely to agree with you or the assessor is likely to reject the evidence you've submitted and they'll tell you why. And you learn from uh, constructive feedback. Okay, so I expect this criteria to be quite straightforward to you when you read it and you should be able to understand it. It's terminology that we should be familiar with as electricians. OK. Anything that's sleeping out there? OK. When you're producing evidence and you're installing something, you as the installer need to check and there's uh, assessment criteria it says check the planned locations for the wiring system in terms of cosmetic appearance is it level okay what do you use to level it have you considered the external influences for example if you're in a special location are you installing a component that's suitable to the zone so that's what that means As with other units, we've got naturally occurring bits of evidence that you can attach or you make reference to. It's asking you to use sources of information to enable the installation to, to take place. So what would you be using? Yeah, of course you'll be using drawings available to you on site, specifications, manufacturer's instructions to refer to them. Make note, you know, there are no givens here. If you don't mention it, show it, talk about it, video it. The assessor won't assume that you've used those sources of information. So make sure that you say it. And if you can, if you're submitting a reflective account, if it's in a PDF form, if it's available online, paste it in as part of the evidence that you're submitting. Take a picture of you using it on site. Take a picture of you referring to the drawings if you're not able to send them into your assessor. OK, before you go on and do the installation. So. That strengthens the evidence that you're submitting. OK, and on this slide here, we've got the actual cables, wiring systems and electrical components that you'll be expected to install to complete this unit. We've also got, again, a reminder of the behaviours. If we go back now to the cable types, five different types of cable. OK, you need to install them. You're installing them to correct industry standards, to the correct wiring regulations. So you're going to be talking about the zones. So you're not just talking about simply, I installed a, a 2.5 twin and earth cable. We need to talk like electricians, don't we? So I installed it. This is the route it took. 
This is the length of cable that I installed. This is the size of the cable, the type of cable. I ensured that, or you ensured that it was in the correct zone. Coming down to the accessory. And you can talk about where you referenced the zones, for example, in your on-site guide. You can talk about the types of clips that you use to support the cable along its intended route. Or indeed, the cable might have been uh, routed within some of the wiring systems, for example, the metallic trunking or, or uh, conduit along its route. So that's the sort of information that you'll be putting in your reflective account. That's the sort of evidence that your assessor will be looking for. So we've got the cable types, we've got the electrical components. Again, ensuring that you're making reference to any installation specification, for example, manufacturer's instructions. With the wiring systems, sitting gills a little bit more prescriptive now. We've got uh, a requirement that you must and will be installing conduit, whether that conduit is PVC or metallic. You're going to be installing trunking, again, PVC or metallic. And then one other from the list below, cable tray or basket, etc. So that's what you've got to do on at least two occasions. And that's what you'll be, assessor will be looking at through your reflective accounts or observing you in the workplace as part of their visits. And then I've listed up lastly the behaviours for this unit. All eight will be required to be evidenced. Be aware, read through them. And what you should realise is that they're almost naturally occurring. If you're doing your job well, you're to the standards, standards expected uh, as apprentices, you will be evidencing those behaviours. Be aware of what they are. So that completes this presentation on Unit 109. Um, hope you found it helpful. A share or leave comments. If I need to make adjustments, I will. Um, and good luck on your apprenticeship journey.